Recently I made a video where I showed how you could use the dynamic paintbrush tool, which is a $5 premium tool, to take a range mask and to edit that range mask uh, to isolate the subject matter that you really wanted to use. Uh, unfortunately, that tool is only available for Windows, so I thought I'd make another video showing how you can do the same thing with the Clone Stamp tool. Clone Stamp is something that comes with uh, PixInsight, and so it's part of every installation. So we're going to start off with my partially processed image of M101. We'll create a range mask, which we have here. Now, for our purposes, what we need to do is we need to create what I'm calling a paint bucket. It will be a, an image, which is the same size as a mask, but it's all black and acts as a source of pixels that we'll be copying. The easiest way to do that is to simply make a copy of this image. Uh, once we have a copy of the image, it has exactly the same dimensions as the mask, so it's a good source. In this case, we, the window's a little larger than I want, so I'm going to shrink this down so it's the same size and just arrange it a little bit more neatly. Now that I've done that, I want to make this all black. And the simplest way to do that is to use the pixel math tool. And you put in this extremely complex equation, which is zero, that's it. Zero represents black in PixInsight. That's all you need. Once it's in there, you can now drag the triangle over, let go, and voila, we have a black image that we can now use as a source image. Now I can open up the clone stamp tool. First thing I want to do is make sure that I have the tool set up to do, work the way I want. So I have the radius pretty large. I got 250 pixels, so I have a big brush. And I have softness pretty high up because I want the edges to this to be nice and soft so that I'm not having hard edges when I'm editing things. Now the next sequence has to be choreographed a little bit because it has to happen in a certain order. First thing you need to do is click on the and activate the window that is the mask you're going to be editing. That creates a link because this is a dynamic tool and we need that link between the image and the tool. Next thing I need to do is I need to create um, a source for the pixels that I'll be stamping. So I'm going to go over to my paint bucket and I'm going to do a control click here. And as soon as I've done that, I'm going to come over here and activate this window. And once I do that, you notice in the middle of the paint bucket, I now have an X. That means that's the source. At this point, I can now start to paint and as I'm painting, I'm wiping out the detail that I don't want to be part of this mask. Now, depending where you've clicked in the other image, you may run out of range. So if you notice here, I have a hard edge here and I'm running off the edge of the map there. So you can always click on a different part, control click and continue working. And if you run out of range, just go back and click again. So I'm going to try to clean up this whole image. And in the video, I'm going to speed this up so it won't be something you have to watch me do. Okay, once you're done, remember this is a dynamic tool. So all these strokes you've made have been collected by the tool, but they haven't been applied. And they won't be applied until you hit this check mark. I'm pretty much done with my mask cleanup now, so I'm going to do that. The tool will run, and now... This is part of the permanent mask, and we no longer need this image any longer, so we can just dispense with it. And now we have used the, stone, the clone stamp tool to do the corrections here. Now, I think the, the tool is a little funky in the way it works and how you have to keep resetting uh, your source of pixels. Um, and I find that to be a little bit irritating, which is why I tend to like to use the dynamic paintbrush more. But it's certainly a tool that you can use for this, and I hope this helps you get a feel for how that would go.